Today is Wednesday 13th of June and it's 11.20ish p.m. Today I woke up extremely unwell and when I blew my nose I had green phlegm in it again which I noticed wasn't there after the fluids on I think it was last Wednesday so it's getting to exactly a week ago-ish probably wrong on the day or date. Hi everyone, my name's V and this page is dedicated to my story. This is In My Shoes. Wheels optional. The world from a different perspective. Supporting and educating the world, busting the stigmas of disability and invisible illnesses. Hey y'all, so I was planning to do a bit of more of a detailed update, so sorry if this isn't. I am really, really struggling and I apologise. Uh, today... Well, not technically today anymore. And today was pretty... I was really excited as well as extremely stressed out at the same time. Because the doctor who actually looked after me in the emergency department, who was really, really nice. Like, once I explained to him, he said to me and mum that you can't be on a port and have IV fluids forever. And I said to him, I'd had enough of it, because over the last few years, that's all doctors have said, and then they've not allowed me to get fluids, almost like they've stopped it completely, like they think it's dangerous. But long story short, he... I didn't feel like I could be open with him. I'd just been at the ro end of my rope. So I, I said to him... I was actually very polite about it, which I've got to give myself props for. I said, don't take this offensively, but what you've just said has made me extremely angry. And then he went, he, his whole demeanor changed. He became not relaxed, but I think he kind of understood that maybe I was a, a bit emotional. And maybe he was like, oh, maybe I should not have my arms crossed. And he stood up straight, straighter in such a way that he relaxed, in a sense, as well in his body language. Whether it was he consciously did it or he just thought, oh, maybe I said something wrong. But then he turned to me and said, what have I said that's upset you? And none of this was, like, happy tones, but none of it was angry either. It was all kind of just neutral that he was talking to me in which is more than most doctors, most of them are aggressive, which triggers my PTSD. So I was very thankful that he was really nice just for that reason. But then when I explained to him that all the doctors keep saying that fluids are not a lifelong thing and I kind of rambled on now that I realise, looking back on it, I rambled on saying no one will give us the fluids even though we've proven they work and that I need them and that we tried every absolute medication and treatment and everything else and nothing works to even a little of, to give me some semblance of life and I said to him I want quality over quantity and that I just want a life again it's not about how long I live it and he said oh well I didn't mean the fluids I just meant the port which I'd never heard from any doctor no doctor had been even that I guess open and like thinking outside the box was the way I kind of took it and then he explained that trigger warning for people who have issues with blood or like vein veins being disgusted and things like that as well as surgery uh, you might want to click off the video now because I really don't want to upset people so he discussed with me how instead of a port there's options out there 
I can't remember the name he used, and it wasn't the name that I actually looked up at being called, which is like some sort of AV fistula, I think, don't quote me, I might have gotten what it is incorrectly, but he explained how they can bring an artery up to a vein or take a vein down to an artery and they essentially create an, a more natural port into your body instead of using something artificial and foreign to your body like a port which is actually if you've ever seen a port I might put a little picture here but essentially it's a little plastic triangle that goes in like around your collarbone and it's under the skin and you pierce pierce and I can't think of the name guys my brain is not very good at the moment if you haven't noticed a part of I think I'll get into it further about how he then explained uh, sorry I'm getting off track and going in loops a bit, um, a bit more than normal I should say. So a port is like a triangle and you pierce through the skin to then access it. It's a lot better for infection because it's not like a pick where it's actually the cannula hanging out your vein and out your arm. You can de-access a port as in pull out the needle that has the tube or cannula you can pull that out and then it's completely sealed once it heals over in like a minute amount of time because it doesn't take very long for it to heal at all because your body gets used to it and it just is a lot better for infection as well as it's got an artificial tube inside that goes into one of your much larger veins into your heart so it then, in my mind, it then has that it is an artificial vein which will help keep my vein open when a needle is pierced into it, which is the problem. Either they can't get the needle in, the ne needle collapses the vein, whether it's pierced in or it's later done. Even a cannula moving around the tiniest bit in my vein, it'll it'll randomly collapse because my veins are just that fragile and we believe it's my doctors and I believe that it is highly likely it's the POTS and the EDS because the EDS makes it very fragile and stretchy so it kind of flops over too which makes it easier to collapse as well as the POTS yeah and it was explained to me a very long time ago when I used to do my weekly infusions at the infusion centre that I have valves that are also very close together as well as my veins are actually very, very width-wise. They're very, very tiny compared to a normal person. This is, isn't like medical terminology or anything, but they always told me to use the blue needle. <laughs> So they told me for future reference because of the valves being so close together which creates issues in the needle accessing the vein correctly which is why those machines, the IV machines hate me. Anytime in hospital sometimes they will go off every five minutes because my veins they must like flop over or the valves close because no matter what you do the needle will be sitting on a valve or very very close to one and then they're telling me about you need a thinner needle to then access it which also then has the issue that when they put cannulas in a lot of the times nurses won't listen to me when I say put a blue one in one, because they don't think I'm t I know what I'm talking about, and then a medical professional has told me to do this. They think maybe I just think that. I don't know half the time. A lot of them are just so cocky, and they think I don't notice. I notice I just don't speak up until an hour later when it, it won't work or it's blown, and I go, by the way, that nurse didn't do what it, they should have done and I told them to do. 
and they tend to have a guilty looks like, oh, when I explain that I've been told why. So I think it's a good learning experience for them. And more when they see the actual evidence in person of why it needs to be done that way, that it will collapse my vein. And then they'll have to start all over again so that they should listen to me that I know and they should listen to future patients. But then the other issue is that they can't inject things fast then because the needle is thinner so not as much liquid can be pumped in. So say if I have anaphylactic shock they can't pump in adrenaline super fast or anything like that. So that was explained to me why sometimes they won't use the smaller needle but in my eyes it kind of defeats the point because you're not going to get anything in by putting a bigger one in because it'll just collapse anyway <laughs> so it's kind of the thing of you're better off having a smaller one for less issues all around as well as safety because the moment you start injecting that whatever you have to really fast my vein will blow because it'll go this is just too thick I can't too wide I can't handle this which just happens uh, but it's why it always goes to picks and midlines because they just keep collapsing and after a few days of them collapsing as well as the constant beeping every five minutes everyone just has enough of it well me and the nurses the doctor it doesn't really affect them except for when they're there for their 10 minutes. So, I think that a port will work in the opinion that it will hold open that vein or artery and it will be kind of a double, a double backup that it is going to hold it open when I put the needle through because how, it, how you access a port is this is, I've not had, I don't, I've never had a port and I've never seen one in person. This is from all my research as well as I am a terrible YouTube lover because I love a lot of, watching a lot of blogs of people with similar illnesses as well as I am fascinated by medical procedures. Don't ask me why, it's just, put it this way, I did nursing because I enjoyed it <laughs> so I always find that stuff fascinating plus I wanted to know about it if it was going to end up with me having one when you pierce your needle through the skin essentially there's three little dots which you have to pierce the needle between and it kind of just goes in like a plug but yeah so he suggested what that because it's a foreign body it might not work as well as well as you have to get a port in every year from my memory I thought it was every five years but I could be wrong uh, but then he probably knows from a di dialysis point of view so it w it's three times a day so it might be more that it wears out over a year but if you do it once a day every couple days so I'm sorry, I keep having issues thinking and following my own train of thought. Um, it could very well likely be that it's more that if you use it three times a day, it wears out in a year. If you use it every day to maybe once every three days, it wears out in five. Something we want to discuss. After that discussion, and of course my mum had a panic attack and then fainted and they had to rush her out and she became the patient for... <laughs> A short while we were actually quite concerned because she'd just been started on steroids again for her asthma which is quite bad because she had pneumonia last year right when I got really sick which was yeah great timing when the government had also just pulled out funding for support and other carers come in and help but anyway um, but yeah once they worked out what it was because I wasn't sure because it was really fast and hard, but I think it was because he then was discussing, you know, sewing 
a vein and an artery together and he was doing it in graphic detail because I was very curious and I really didn't think with mum there normally I do and I say mum can you just leave the room and then discuss it with the doctor or nurse but I was so out of it and so sick which is why I didn't do a video um, before or after or du during because I was just so out of it and then afterwards I was just so tired and sleepy for once which is great so I had I then asked the nurse after he left like what does he do who is he uh, and she said oh he's a surgeon or he used to be a surgeon he's actually a GP now we didn't know that until we made the appointment though until we arrived at the appointment today that he's actually GP now uh, which is fascinating because GPs have to be so personal with you compared to a surgeon and a lot of the issues with surgeons is often they're not personal enough and they don't listen and they think you know A equals B uh, A plus B equals C or you know instead of going hmm maybe just this once five 1.5 and 1.5 equals 4 which happens with bodies like mine and people with chronic illnesses we don't follow the box but he gave off that opinion that he does so we asked for his contact details if we were allowed them from the nurse and she even said you know if you for asking about IV fluids and stuff if he if he can't help you he will know someone who will and today has just gone really well but I he was so nice today I can't get over how nice he was compared to normal doctors or normal specialists and especially surgeons that I've seen he was just lovely and he I kept apologizing because I've had such trouble today thinking of words and my stutter that thing is back and I don't know why those words make you actually do what they're saying and then the list oh my freaking I hate that word I've hated that word since I had to learn how to not how to learn how to speak but speech therapy as a kid I've hated it <laughs> it's like how do you explain that you've got one say the word and then 90% of the time you'll have what you're talking about <laughs> it'll just prove a hundred you know a hundred percent to that ninety percent of the time because I don't always get one when I say that word so sometimes it's a bit funny when I don't because I'm so used to it and also taking long pauses trying to think of things and then not being able to think of things and I've just been sick uh, like I've the first day like I said on the vid the past video whether that is uploaded before now or after um, I will link when it's uploaded in the description here I, it the fluids lasted two or three days really fully it lasted about a day and then two or three days after that before it kind of fully came back but today it was especially the worst especially getting that green nose back shows that it just somehow magically not magically I mean scientifically people probably know but I think it's magic because I just cannot work out the science really behind it well I can you know it's the low blow volume and de from pots and dehydration and everything which also this doctor said today that he can do tests for some of those things to figure out what's going on like with my fluid levels work out where the fluid might actually be going if I'm drinking four liters a day which I am or very close to you know four liters sometimes even more to the point where I vomit because I've drunk too much water and my stomach can't hold it because we just don't understand where it's going because we had to go to the emergency because I'd stopped peeing even though I was still drinking four litres a day, I hadn't peed in two days. Like, where is it going? Is it the reason I'm fat? Like, 
I don't eat, and even when I do eat, it's not like I absorb it because of the gastroparesis. So is it all just my body absorbing water from malnutrition or, or something? Or it's desperate plea for water, but it can't get it to my veins, so it just sits there. Yeah, it just boggles my mind. And he said today that I'm a special case, and we were open with him and said, you know, all my other doctors that are lovely, my cardiologist and my current GP, have all admitted that I'm outside their scope of knowledge and understanding. And he even said, well, I'm going to be honest with you, you're outside mine too. You know, I was, I appreciated that a lot because that was really nice of him to do. And he probably didn't feel comfortable saying that until we said that and were open about it and showed that we, I know my body is a snowflake because it's not something I choose to do. And we understand that and we've just come to accept it. 99.9% .9 of the time because it's just the way my body is and being upset about it doesn't change it and just him being open about that's that he feels that way too is good because it shows that he's willing to learn but it went well uh, even though I was sick as I was and couldn't concentrate and because I'd been so sick I hadn't finished typing up my symptoms and diagnosis list that I've been working on for years now. I plan to do like a deep description of how the illnesses, how the diagnoses affect me symptom wise as well as what symptoms I have. And history with doctors as in who diagnosed what and when and doing kind of a patient history of my own because the patient history forms that they have are never big enough for me or they don't go into enough detail and then with the appointments like today where I couldn't mentally function mum couldn't either which made me a bit worried but she's just as exhausted as I am over all this and she's just tired of fighting not that we're going to stop, but it gets to a point where you're just like, oh my god, just give us what we need already. Just do the thing that you know works because you've physically seen that it works. But after the appointment today, he admitted, you know, it's outside his scope. But he is more than willing to look over my case and then help us decide if I need a port or if I need a fist the AV fistula or whatever it is or what our next step needs to be but he also brought up that we can do the tests to see where the water is going with my kidneys or liver or something as well as testing my dehydration levels which would be great too because it depends how they test it though but that would be great to know as well and a few other tests but he also was so lovely because he saw how much I was struggling and when I was constantly apologizing, which I don't do to make people feel bad. It is literally because I feel horrible that it's happening, not just to them, but to myself. Like I, Me saying sorry is that I don't want it to happen and that I know I can't control it, but it still makes me feel bad and a bit like I'm annoying people or I'm a burden. Especially when it's a doctor's appointment where they're asking for my history and I'm sitting there for five minutes and then literally say I cannot remember. Or repeating the same things or being a muddled mess. Ugh, my face is so red. I, this is part of it too. Like I always forget there's no light on this camera. I'm trying to show you yeah, here all this. This is really gross, but all this flakiness is all over my face and the redness with the butterfly rash. And I believe that it is because the IV fluids have officially run their course because it's been for the last 
three to four days that it got this bad and no matter how much moisturizer or how much steroid cream I put on it, it's not eczema so the steroid cream does nothing or it it stays moisturized for like 10 minutes until the cream goes sinks in and then it just goes dry and flakes off again and red and moisturizer does the same thing because it's inside dryness I guess <laughs> but then as well he said as we were about to get up and leave that he actually told us that he's working tomorrow night and the night after in the emergency department again if we need fluids he said direct he said literally if I needed if I stop peeing again go to the hospital and he'll put me on fluids which was amazing that he just he didn't fight us he didn't know why the fluids were working right now but he knows that they work because he saw it firsthand and the fact that we're saying we don't understand why it works but it works better than anything so he's told us that if it gets worse which is going to that he'll be in those days uh, which mum is very much considering and even said to me today as much as I don't want to go because I don't want to go and lie and say I'm not peeing when I am if that's the only reason he wants me to get fluids but she said that he came off more that he was using that as an excuse I guess for them not to push me out the door as a you know it come in again if you get worse but how's he going to tell me worse? <laughs> like how does he measure worse and how do I measure worse? So he was more saying, I think, if you get to the point where you don't think that you're coping, come in and get fluids. And that's what mum kind of picked up on as well. So I may be in emergency again because it's officially worn off and I'm just... God, God knows how much of a mess this video is going to be when I edit it. And not looking forward to it, but yeah... And again, I apologize for how long it's been since I updated with videos, but I am just this sick. And it is just the fact that I'm, I just have a headache at the moment, but I pretty much have had migraines constantly the last three days. Today, it's eased it off a little bit. It's still a headache, but it's not a migraine which by the way hurt when I blink because it puts pressure on my eyes oh the hell but I can't stare at my computer screen when they happen as well as I can't do a lot of things on the computer when I'm this sick because my brain is not coherent enough as well as I can't get a plain thought across and yeah it's just it's why on top of my computer dying <laughs> everything's been delayed I do have a rented or well not rented it's a loan computer of the person that was hoping to fix my laptop which I plan to go back to him and buy a built computer off him with no interest loan because I can't live without a computer for this reason like I do a lot of graphic design drawing as well as the vlogging and also blogging writing articles all sorts and not having a computer is also affecting my social life so it's for my health as well realistically keeps me mentally active in society because I can't really physically do that so I need a computer and I'm hoping that because I've never gotten a null loan ever that I can get one for the computer especially if we put forward you know I do work through it as well as studying as well as writing articles and reading articles for my health as well as health wise it affects me as well so yeah but getting the health to even just send that application off so I'll keep you all updated. Thank you again. 
as always, for watching. I don't care if I look like absolute trash because this is just sick sometimes. I'm old enough to even put in a little bit of effort for makeup, but I am just not. Even if I don't look sick, and I say, not that you have to look like this to be sick. Like, I can look this bad, I, I can look perfectly fine and feel this bad. So I'm not saying that everyone who looks this bad is sick. Don't judge a book by a cover. Just look at, I hate to bring it up, but look at people with cancer. Unless they tell you they've got cancer, that you wouldn't always know. Because not everyone loses their hair, not everyone does chemo. That's stereotypes. And you know, you shouldn't judge anyone by a book cover. Everyone's different. You should love everyone. Unless they're a dick. Then don't then that then then you're very much reasonable in saying that you you don't like them and you're judging them because they're, they're <laughs> but anyway guys thank you again for watching uh, don't forget to hit that like button and comment if you like this video or if you have any ideas of future videos you'd like me to do maybe or even if you have questions to ask me I might do a question video if I get enough questions eventually and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified when I upload or you can follow me on my other social medias which will be in the description below or in the next panel all right thanks guys love ya night